Mark, hello and welcome to my garden. Um, we're going to uh, just want to ask you a few questions because we know new things are happening so um, we'd like to know a lot more about your story and, and what's um, coming up. But, but first of all, um, you've been at Christchurch for about the last eight years I understand, which is great, it's been really good to have you. Um, but you've been doing something different for the last three years, Chris, as well as what we've seen you do. Tell us a little bit about that. Okay, so I've been attending uh, Queen's Theological Foundation College and uh, for the last three years I've been tortured by tutors with very long words and uh, lots of definitions and concepts that I had never come across before, uh, even though I've been a Christian for many years. Um, and yes, we've been put through our paces. I've been on a placement at a church that's very, very different from uh, Christ Church and uh, experienced many different ways of of meeting with God really and it's been very very challenging and uh, very deepening. So before we go on to hear about what you will be doing, um, both of you give us a highlight from uh, the, the last eight years. I guess the, um, the funniest highlight was when we first decided that we would go to church in uh, Sally Park. We decided we were going to go to the Baptist Church to give it a try. And we were walking around the park, got out of the car and uh, started walking towards the church, Chris marching on ahead and I suddenly realised she'd gone straight past it. I said, Chris, Chris, where are you going? By that time we got to Christchurch, John Mason had started saying hello and we were just too embarrassed. So that was our introduction to Karen, to uh, Christchurch. We've been there for a while. Our uh, second highlight was um, on that very morning we went into the church and realised within seconds that we knew the vicar of Christchurch from many years beforehand at St John's Harborn when he was curate there. And again, we just thought, this is a sign we're meant to be at this church because uh, we prayed that we wanted to grow um, and that was a sign that we, although we'd mistaken the church for the wrong church, um, it was the right thing to do and that Jeff was the right person to sort of lead us in our next stage of growth. Um, and it was sort of through Jeff's encouragement to come out of retirement from youth work and get involved again with that, I ended up with Soul Survivor, the trip uh, with with Rachel and the young people and uh, it was during one of the evening events and I was sitting there thinking I was safe because Soul Survivor is all about the young people and the speaker just launched into actually tonight's not just about the young people God wants to talk to some of you uh, grown-ups out there uh, and uh, challenge you and your thinking and sure enough I was very challenged and came back from that experience and found Jeff and said, OK, I need to go down the discernment road. So a highlight there, definitely. Thank you. So, Mark, you've been helping with um, Easy Worship for the, for the last couple of years, probably. And Chris, you've done youth work and lunch club and um, lots of different things. So we do want to thank you for the, the contribution that you've made. You, you are going to be... Uh, sorely missed by by us all, by the congregation. Um, but you're moving on, so tell us a little bit about what you're going to be doing then, Chris. So, uh, it's interesting that uh, having met with my training incumbent, uh, Debbie Collins, um, church is going to look different, so uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing um, other than uh, the usual things, so we're hoping that as time goes on a little way there'll be funerals and baptisms and weddings um, and I'm really excited about taking part in those and being part of people's journeys and I think that's the thing that came across the last three years at Queen's College that um, it's not just a case of turning up and leading a service uh, that you actually are alongside people in their journeys um, when those journeys are hard and when those journeys have celebrations. So that's what I'm looking forward to. And tell us a little bit more about the church that you're going to. So the church building is very different from Christchurch. It's uh, not a new build as such. 
Um, but then again, it's it's not like the medieval uh, St. Lawrence Church where I did my placement either. So it sort of falls, if you like, architecturally between those two poles. Um, its congregation is small, uh, but we're looking to be missional and uh, reach out to the community and get to know them and, and draw them in to, to God's love and to what Jesus would like to share with them. And that's what we're praying for. I can't remember whether we've actually said it's Holy Cross uh, Billsley, but just in case we haven't, I'll say it now. And, um, and what's the uh, area like? What's the community like? So um, I don't really know Billsley Common at all, uh, but I have had a, a sort of a little walk around by the church and uh, driven around, um, and it's very multicultural. And I, I like that idea. Um, that does excite me. Um, it's very residential. Um, it's not on a main high street, so you don't get a lot of footfall. Um, so I think a lot of the work that we do will have to be within the local residential area. Um, and it doesn't have a church school. So again, any school work that we do, it will be a case of uh, just coming alongside those schools and, uh, and seeing what we can offer them. Um, so yeah, it's a very mixed parish. So it's a curacy, it's a non-stipendary curacy, which for the non-Anglicans means you don't get paid anything. Um, and part-time, I understand? How, um, what does that look like? What are your hours going to look like? Okay, so part-time in the church translates to uh, two working days of uh, being at the church or doing visits uh, or part of projects, then one day of study and then Sundays. Um, so really it's four days out of seven. That doesn't sound like part-time to me. <laughs> Mark, what are you going to do then? So Chris is, has got a definite role and a definite place to be. What are your plans for the time ahead? So my goal in the longer term is to join Chris and be part of that community. In the short term, that's going to be pretty difficult to do so I imagine essentially being between churches so part of my time will stay at Christchurch and part with Chris. Hopefully you'll miss us too. So um, from what I understand you won't be moving house. Um, what, do you plan to kind of cut your ties with Christchurch completely or how, how is, do you think it's going to look in the times ahead? So we've made some really great friends over the eight years and uh, at the moment, the thought of cutting ties is so painful. And especially with this uh, lockdown and everything, it's, it's our friendship groups that keep us going. So uh, we're not cutting ties from that point of view at all. <laughs> so I hope you don't mind. <laughs> you can't get rid of us that easily. Um, so yeah, we, we want to stay in touch and uh, any, any excuse for celebrating. Uh, and also we'd love to come and see what your new minister's like. So if you see people wearing masks at the back of the church, it's probably us and we're just incognito. <laughs> we'll make sure you get an invite. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so what can we pray for you as you move into this new time? It's uh, a strange time to be moving into a new time. What can we pray for you? Uh, to feel part of the new family uh, without feeling not having a family at all so as we settle into Billsley this is not not going to be an easy transition in that um, we can't just get to know people after services as easily so just that we feel a part of something um, part of a family yeah don't get lost between churches yeah and what about prayers for your ministry Chris so while we're in a time of doing everything online, uh, I am dyslexic and I find reading things electronically much, much harder, uh, find it harder to process things. So I think really that the Lord can still talk to me, even through electronics, that uh, I will feel his presence very much and, and part of my ministry. Well, thank you very much. We, um, it's been great to talk to you both this afternoon. Uh, as I've said loads of times, we will miss you, but we do um, pray for you and, and wish you all the very best in your new place. And um, thank you. Thank you.